Hello everybody and a really warm welcome back to my channel and I'm just squeezing my way into the workshop now. If you look at my normal content you'll know that I love to restore and run vintage model railway items and I usually upload something once a week and it's great fun doing that. But also in my spare time I enjoy keeping a very small fleet of classic cars on the road and the reason for that is I use them in my work. I'm a repairer of antique clocks. You could call me a horologist. And I go to lots of different places. Uh, I enjoy traveling to fetch and deliver clocks. And I like to use old cars. Now, this particular Aston Martin DBS has been in my ownership since 2004. Now, I'm not going to say how much I paid for it then, but I will tell you with the same money in 2004, you could get a really quite decent brand new Ford Focus. Now, check out this build sheet. I'm really disappointed. Look, the guarantee has expired. We've got an issue date there of the 22nd of July. So I guess that's when the car was finished. It was registered um, August in 68. Now, it's a standard car. That means the engine is equipped with SU carburetors, whereas um, a lot of people try and get excited about Vantage versions. Now, I've driven those lovely cars, but not quite as tractable. Um, now, if you've got the automatic, there's definitely yeah, a little bit more power available with the Vantage. But the SU car performs quite nicely with the extra it's been fitted with at the factory. So check it out. We've got a ZF transmission on this car. Um, great sounds from the Motorola radio plus electric aerial. And going round tight corners slowly is a little easier because it's got power steering. But let me tell you, you don't need to go to the gym because the brake pedal's wooden and hard. The clutch is heavy and the steering, even with that power assistance, keeps your wrists supple. Now, just before we get to the water pump, which is what I've been up to, have a quick look around the garage. There's a 1952. Um, That's an 80 inch Land Rover and I've been using that as storage because I'm having a bit of engine trouble, but I'll get round to that. I think I've got to the bottom of it. Um, so that's fairly high up on the list of next jobs to do. Above the Aston on the ramp at the moment is something else that I might talk about in the future. Uh, it could be pressed into action in the next month or two because I have got a road trip to Austria coming up and I'm going to be using the vehicle above the Aston to go there. So quite a few people have written to me about this water pump. I made four YouTube shorts and I was surprised at the interest they've generated, hence this video, because what I'm doing is instead of trying to answer the questions, I'm going to try and make a couple of short videos um, in the normal format to give all the people that have asked about this repair an update about how it's going. So a couple of videos to come. This video, I'm going to put the pulley back on. Now look, I'm very happy with this. If I just um, turn this shaft, it's super smooth. There's two bearings in there. If you look at the workshop manual, you can see that there's one at the back, a spacer and one at the front. The rear one is held in with a circlip. The shaft goes in and there's another um, circlip on the shaft, which you should be able to see there. And it's all gone back really nicely. Ignore the hammer marks on the shaft. Ignore the damage to the pulley, the two bits that would be cracked out by someone using a three-legged puller in the past. I've just run a stone round that sharp edge. I'm not going to lose any sleep over this pulley because 19 years I've had the car and um, the fan belts have never shredded. Look at these. Never jumped off. So um, although it's not aesthetically pleasing, those um, chips are just part of the history of the vehicle. I mean, the next owner might do a concourse rebuild, so I'm sure this pulley will be repaired, but uh, I'm leaving it. Now, look at this bearing. I've taken the dust shield out because uh, I wanted you to see the state of it. Now, the rumbling is quite evident in the first of the short videos I put on YouTube. Listen. 
But what I didn't show is the back. Now someone's had a go at putting this bearing in either with a bit of pipe or a punch or something. I mean, it's a bit of a shame. I think whoever rebuilt this water pump in the past, I mean, they didn't really have the correct tools or knowledge to do it properly. But it is going back together nicely now. Now, it's a wonder it didn't fail before. Here's the seal. Now, ignore the fact that the carbon thrust has gone. I had to destroy that so I could get the impeller off. Now, look at this. If I just run my finger, you can see... Oh, the focus is playing up, but you can see when it was inserted, it wasn't inserted very well, was it? We have a great big blister here where this actual seal was just hardly put into the pump properly. Um, I mean, it's amazing that I got 19 years of running out of this car without the water pump making a noise or leaking, but uh, there you go. The seal and impeller are something I'm going to show you in the next video. But today, I am going over to the hydraulic press in a minute to just put the pulley on. Now, I've been looking at the service manual and uh, the pulley has to go on exactly level with this shoulder that my fingernail's resting on. Now, let me tell you, when I took it apart, and you might see in the shorts, the pulley was over three millimetres, four mil, I mean, four mil further forward, hence the slight brushing of the whole set coupling on the radiator. Well, it's a tight fit in there anyway, but it's going to be a bit better when this pump has been rebuilt properly. Just another note, when you buy bearings off the shelf, whether they're cheap or expensive, I always prize very carefully one of the seals out and I like to press in a little bit of extra grease. Don't go too mad. But you'll be surprised at how little lubricant is in some of these bearings when you get them. And I know they say sealed for life, lubricated for life. Well, a little bit of extra, you know, suitable grease. Make sure it's correct for the use. Uh, it needs to be in bearings. It needs to have high temperature properties, extreme pressure properties, and uh, obviously good lubricational properties. But I forced a little bit more. This is a bearing, a spare. I did buy more than the number I needed to repair the pump. And I just thought I'd show you how this looked. Um, and I can, of course, there's the seal. It's a, a relatively easy job and whether I can do it um, while we're watching the video, um, once I've put my extra lubrication in, um, it's not so easy with um, the metal shielded bearings, but though I have got a way of taking those apart as well. But the rubber shielding bearings come apart nicely. Now, look at that. You can't tell it's been apart. It's got a little bit of extra lubrication in there. And um, I'm pretty sure that I won't be needing to take this water pump apart again for bearing failure in my ownership. OK, I'm going to get over to the press and pop that pulley on. Um, and that will be the final part of the video. So for now, I hope... You've got um, a bit more insight into this water pump repair. And I really thank you for taking the time to look at this quick video. I look forward to any comments you might have. And until next time, I'll say goodbye.